role and embrace that role for a minute. Um, so you can open your eyes. Good morning, class. How are you guys doing today? Good. Great. Did you guys catch that snowstorm? Did you have a fun time playing in the snow a few days ago? Yeah. Yeah? Did anyone build a snowman? Yeah. Who built the biggest snowman in here? You did really big. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, were you guys warm in the snow? <coughs> no. No? Does some people get cold? Yeah, what do you do when you get cold? Cry. 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 <laughs> you go inside. Okay, well that's fantastic. But what, let's, let's imagine for a minute that you guys went on a hike, okay, with your mom and dad. And you guys are up in the mountains. And does anyone, has anyone in here ever been hiking before? Yeah, is it fun? You like to hike? Well, let's imagine that you guys got lost in your hiking. And so you're going through the woods and, and you can't find your way back to the car. And you're just lost. What, what would you do? You would cry some more, some more crying? Well, what if, what if you just couldn't find your way? What, were, what would be some of the things that would be important to you? Let's say that it was snowing and you got lost. What would you have to do? Build a fire. Build a fire? Okay, why would you build a fire? To keep warm. To keep warm, right? Or else you'd freeze to death. You'd be frozen stiff like that. And so, um, but what would happen, let's imagine that, that you were hiking, but your dad, he forgot the matches to build the fire. Because he didn't know you were going to be lost, right? And your mom, she forgot the lighter, and so you were just completely lost, and you didn't have any fire. And so one thing that we're going to talk about today is how to make a fire without any matches or lighter. And we're going to talk about what's called a bow drill fire. So what, what is, what's, there's, there's a couple words in, in a bow drill fire, right? There's three words. What's the first word? Bow. Bow, right? What's a bow? You guys know what a bow is? A bow and arrow. A bow and arrow, right? Okay, so this kind of looks like a bow, right? This, you can pull it back and you can shoot an arrow on it. All right, so that's the bow part of the bow drill fire. And then what, what's a drill? Do you guys have, uh, does your parents have uh, tools in, in, a, in a garage maybe? Have you guys seen a drill? It's that thing that you drill down into wood or something that spins really fast and it makes a hole, right? Well, that's a drill. And so for the drill in our bow drill fire, we're gonna have this bow and then a drill. And the drill is made from a special plant called a yucca plant. You guys say yucca? Yeah. yeah. It's like if your mom gave you some like goulash or something that was really gross for dinner, you would say yuck. It's yucca. Um, and so this is the drill, and it's going to spin really fast, and it's going to do something called friction. So everyone take their hands together and rub them really fast and hard together. Now put them on your face. Is it a little warm? Yeah. yeah? That's called friction, and so what happens is you get two objects that are rubbing together, and they create that warmth or that friction. And so that's what we're going to do. And there's two other pieces to the bow drill. We talked about the bow and the drill, but the other two are called a, the, the one's called a fireboard. Okay, and the fireboard is what the drill gets placed on. And then you have a what should we call this? We'll call it a hand. Okay, that's kind of a dumb name. What do you guys want this to be? A block. A Maybe block. <laughs> okay, then you, can, then you have a block. And so what you're going to do is you're going to put, this goes on top of the block, and then the bow actually spins the spindle, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a, a little reason, a little example of how this would work, all right? And hopefully we won't get any smoke to set off a uh, fire alarm. So I'm going to climb up here on the table, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put my foot on the fireboard, okay? So it's right on here directly on the fireboard, and my, you can see my left knee is resting on it, and then this hand, my right arm, just kind of comes around and it looks comfortable. Do I look comfortable right now? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my bow, bless you, I'm going to take my bow, and wind it around the drill like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our block, okay, and put it on top. Now, can you see that the bow is actually winding around the uh, drill here? Well, what, what's happening is I turn it, you see how the, the spindle's actually moving, okay? And so that's creating that friction that we talked about when you rub your hands. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go back and forth, okay? And as, if you can look, 
you might see a little bit of smoke start to come out here. You guys see that smoke? about the way that, that that was done in relation to a presentation that might have been done for a, a group of adults? Tone of voice. Tone of voice, okay. What was different about it? It was like you were trying to make us really curious about what you were doing. Did you guys get a little excited? Yeah. A little bit? <laughs> okay, you got a lot more animated. So if you remember, I can, like I said, I have, I have a four-year-old and a two-year-old, so. You can talk to them for about 20 seconds to try and teach them something, and then they're off, and they're, they're running all over the place. Um, and so really being able, and we're going to talk about this, but what else did you uh, notice from the presentation? Anything stick out? Repetition. Repetition, okay. Was there an example of that? that... Um, like when you first used the word friction, you used it a couple of times, like in a couple of sentences. I guess so like, it was a new word that you recognize it and maybe learn what it was. Great. It was engaging, like you asked us questions. Great. We had us do things with our hands and stuff so that we were staying engaged. Right, absolutely, absolutely. Well, good. I'm glad you guys picked those things out, and, and we'll kind of come back to that. Um, and the wonderful thing that I'll, I'll say about working with kids is that it's just so exciting because you can just really kind of be goofy and uh, and encourage So, but with that being said, why is why is children's interpretation so important? They are the future. They are the future. <laughs> What's that song? Children. Oh, you knew, you were going for it. No, go for it. We are the future? Oh, I was thinking a different song. Well, I'm sure there's a lot of songs. Okay. We are the future. I really like this, this quote here by this naturalist, uh, Robert Pyle. He said that, what is the extinction of a condor to a child who has never seen a wren? Um, so that really says, says a lot. This, we're going to talk about today about the disconnect with nature that children are having in today's society. I like this, this visual here. If you have this giraffe, obviously a children's toy that has been kind of impregnated, if you will, with a, a DVD player of some sort. And so here you have this child that may even still be in their crib or a toddler of some sort that is playing with this animal, but then they're seeing all these visual, they're being exposed so dramatically to um, technology. And so there's less opportunities, people are having less contact with nature in general, and there's less opportunities for children to react with nature. Um, one, one reason why is that uh, children are becoming more, more scared of nature. Any ideas why children would be scared of nature? Okay, so just certain unfamiliarity, right? Not being dirty. exposed to it. What? They'll get dirty. They'll get dirty? Okay. Snakes. It stinks? Okay. No, snakes. Snakes? Okay. Do you think that all these things worry about being dirty and snakes and um, what was the other one? And maybe just not being exposed to it. Do you think these things are within the children's own nature? Or, I'm sorry, it's a double play on words. Within the children's innate characteristics? No. no, right? Children want to get 
get outside. They want to get dirty. They want to play around. But what's the limiting factor? Parents and society, right? It's saying, you know what? Your kids are going to get hurt. They're going to get sued. You know, all these, all these certain things and these, these kind of limitations around that. So in going along with that, I have a, uh, a song that I like to play that, that kind of brings out some of these ideas. And I had it built into the PowerPoint, but it didn't save. And anyway, so I'm going to play it on the laptop. So if I'm going to turn the volume all the way up. If everyone can just kind of listen, hopefully you'll be able to hear it. So there's obviously certain influencing factors that, such as um, technology, um, social, society's kind of perception of nature, and, and kind of what takes place there. And one of the big things that we're seeing in the last, you know, 20, 30 years is just this the obesity epidemic, which is just very prevalent in children. Um, it's it's so sad to see these kids that are that are just kind of porking out. And they're not having that, that physical connection, that physical activity, um, because their parents are either concerned that they're trying to shelter them from, from these dangers. Um, 